Hi, Terry here, and welcome back to Times Gone Tech. So, earlier this morning, we did part A of TO24, making the sensitizer. It's in the room drying now. And uh, so now it's early afternoon, and I'm going to make up a batch of isopropyl nickel amine guanidine perchlorate. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Let me try that one again. Isopropyl nickel amine guanidine perchlorate. That is the main initiating charge in the percussion cap primer, which I'm making uh, TO24 for use with some antique muzzle loaders. So let's get started on that very quickly here. Um, blah, blah, blah. So I've got this set up for every one gram of amino guanidine bicarbonate that you use. You're going to want to use 0 0.86 grams ammonium perchlorate. 0.43 grams nickel carbonate and 35 milliliters, 90% or stronger isopropyl alcohol. You might want to add a little bit to that. I think I measured out around 37 milliliters. You can go a little more. You just don't want to use any less because we're going to boil it. And as it boils, of course, alcohol evaporates very quickly. So you want to kind of keep that into account. So, Making INAP is just embarrassingly easy. First, you want to measure out and combine all three reagents together. Then we're going to set up our alcohol outside because it is alcohol and we're on a hot plate. So we're going to set that up outside and bring that to a boil. If you have a hot plate, especially a programmable hot plate, with a magnetic stirrer, I highly encourage you to use it. If you don't have one, but you want to get one, then please, by all means, do so. I do not have one, but I've discovered that in most cases, you don't really need it. Uh, there are some instances where you really want the stuff stirring, but you don't want to be close to it. This is not one of them. This is a very, uh, very simple, very user-friendly technique. And while we're waiting for that to heat up, a quick safety tip. Whenever I'm working with any kind of a process that involves an exothermic reaction and there is a risk that that reaction could potentially get out of hand, I always keep a dump bucket handy. This is a five gallon bucket full of water. Uh, there's no water in this one right now uh, because there's actually not much of a risk of a runaway exothermic reaction with this particular process. But this is a good idea to keep one handy if there is. That way, if the reaction does start getting out of hand, I can just scrape everything off into the bucket and run. And with this particular reaction, there is a fire risk. Well, because hot alcohol, hot plate, right? So for that, I always keep a handy chemical rated fire extinguisher handy. And of course, you always want to uh, keep in mind some common sense PPE um, as and when appropriate, like safety glasses, face shield, gloves, acid resistant apron or clab coat, things like that. Um, you know, whenever you feel that the, um, the risk justifies it. So what is isopropyl nickel amine guanidine perchlorate? Well, back in 2013, a new primary explosive was patented called nickel aminoguanidine perchlorate, or NAP. It was patented and then nothing else was done with it. Now that was back in 2013. So 11 years later, a guy named Doug, with a channel he calls Energetic America, he's discovered it and started working with it. And he's discovered two new variants he calls INAP and UNAP, respectively. Well, INAP is what I'm working with in uh, T24 percussion cap primer. It's made by boiling these three chemicals together. And uh, NAP is made by, by boiling the same three chemicals in the same proportions in water. But when you boil them in water, as it crystallizes out, it, it creates these very um, long, large, really kind of pretty blood red crystals that whenever they break, they have a tendency to detonate. So it's very difficult, if not impossible, to grind it up to use it in a you know, priming compound. But if you mix those same three ingredients in isopropyl alcohol, something very different happens, which you're going to see in this video. And that is that, that it forms a kind of a light pinkish 
salmon brown color, I guess is the best way to describe it. And very small platelet type crystals, which are very easy to uh, mix up and pack into a gun primer. It's actually kind of cool to watch compared to making tetrazine because it happens so quickly. You know, unlike tetrazine, you set it up, you wait 24 hours, 12 hours, and you've got tetrazine. With this, there's almost no decanting, no filtering when it's done, which you'll see here in a bit. You just dump it out on a coffee filter and let it dry. It'll happen right before your eyes. And just for the record here, I'm making up one gram of INAP. There we go. Okay, we brought it to a boil. So now we're just going to cover it, dump everything in, stir it. And you're going to wait about five minutes. And I'm already starting to see some forming. That is amazing. Okay, we're down to one minute. It's forming. I'm going to turn the heat down some more. Can you see that right there, along there? That's it forming out. And it's all along the top too you can't probably maybe can't see it through that camera lens but all along the top i can see it starting to form so you don't want to cook this any more than five minutes i've got about 30 seconds to go and that's it we're going to take it off the heat turn this off and we just let it sit now and finish crystallizing Okay, we're back. Let me do a quick sound check. Sound is on. I'm pretty sure it's finished forming up here. Just going to pour that out. Do a quick IPA wash to get the rest of it out. And there it is. And that yield is absolutely, is fantastic. That's almost, I'm going to guess that's almost about 100%. That's at least an 80, maybe 90% yield. So that's all there is to it. Uh, this being alcohol, it will evaporate very quickly, unlike water. So this will dry out actually faster than the tetracine does. And uh, again, just a few more uh, quick little facts about, I know it's a darker color here. When it dries, it'll be a lot lighter. Um, I'm not sure what its detonation velocity is or what its density is. Um, it is somewhat sensitive to impact. You, I'll do a quick demonstration here after it's dried. Uh, it is almost completely insensitive to friction. I haven't been able to set it off yet, scrubbing it with a hammer just on, on a brick surface like this as hard as I can. I can't get it to go off. And it is very sensitive to heat. With indirect heat, it detonates. And with direct heat, it just burns. It deflagrates very quickly. So it's actually a combination of detonation and deflagration, which is what we want in a primer. So while that is drying out, I just want to address one quick little issue or question that has come up. And that is, can any of this stuff, um, INAP, tetrazine, or TO24, be used to make a bomb? Short answer is no. Don't, don't even go there. It's just not going to happen. Primary contact explosives do not make good bombs. First of all, they're too inefficient. You'd have to have too much of it. Because comparatively speaking, I mean, compared to other secondary explosives like um, RDX, cyclonite, TNT, things like that, these things are incredibly weak explosives. You would take, it would take so much of it 
to get the amount of force you would need to make a bomb with, I mean, even a pipe bomb, that they're more, more than likely going to detonate under the stress of their own weight because they are contact explosives. They are sensitive to friction and uh, impact. So yeah, you, you, you could make up a few ounces or a pound, but you're more likely to blow yourself up trying to carry the thing out the door. And then it wouldn't be much of a bomb. I mean, they just, when's the last time you heard of a terrorist using mercury fulminate to make a bomb with? No, or lead stifenate, you know, it just don't, it doesn't work. Uh, they, they just, they're not, they do not make bombs. So I guess, have I said that enough? As, does that answer your question? They're only useful in small amounts, like in a gun primer or a percussion cap or in a detonator for other more powerful secondary explosives. And it's really, that's really all they're good for. So sorry about that. And um, I'm going to let everything dry. And while it's doing that, I'm going to punch out some cap shells. And then I'll be back later this afternoon, this evening, and uh, we'll make up some TL24 and uh, some percussion caps.